Hey everybody and welcome to today's video in which we will be modeling a chair or a wooden paddle chair. Now this model, this is the one that I'm talking about, was actually used in one of my uh, previous live streams and I've actually had quite a few people ask me how this thing was made and even though it was actually modeled online I would like to make it so we can actually you can see how this thing is modeled and bro uh, broken down from modeling the low poly a high poly version and then baking everything and getting ready to be used in Unreal so let's begin first things first is that I don't actually have any information about this chair so this means that I'm gonna have to do some guesstimation and that means that we will not be following strict rules so we're gonna have some leniency to change some of the stuff on, on this chair and this is actually a bench so I'm actually gonna do some change uh, some different changes here that are gonna be a bit different from what we did on the live stream so let's begin now before I start modeling this model I want to break it down into the illogical elements that this thing is made out of from what I can see in here I have this cylinder in the middle I have this anchor uh, model like thing uh, holding the cylinder then I have the seat the backrest made out of these paddles and I have this support for the back and for the seat and also we have this thing on the, the bottom holding down the cylinder so let's start modeling this thing one by one and also another thing uh, that we can add is that we have these uh, woven ropes in here so they're more of a decoration in here so let's start off uh, modeling this thing now before I do anything else uh, what you can see in here is that I actually have a box in here that has the size of uh, length of 60 centimeters with 140 and the height of 95 now what is this this is actually the size that I got off from uh, Google that is more or less the size for a standard uh, wooden bench that you would find so we're going to start uh, off with this as more or less as a placeholder for this thing. So it's going to be something like a bounding box, which should help us with making this thing to the right size. All right, so let's start off with the most prominent thing, and that is to model the cylinder on the side. I'm going to start off by creating a cylinder in here and I know that this line in here is the line that's supposed to be the height of the seat which if I take a look at my uh, image is more or less in the center of my cylinder uh, a bit more to the uh, a bit more on the upper side of the center but that should give me an idea as to how big this thing should be so I'm going to click and drag out something like this so about 27 centimeters as a radius so i'm going to go with something more round like 25 and let's give it a height which in this case would be the actual width of this thing let's try with five or maybe even seven something like this i'm going to put this thing to the side and now another thing that's actually worth mentioning here at this stage is the geometry or how uh, low you want to have your geometry or what sort of a model this thing is going to be used for so if you're going to be using this thing in a game that's going to be seen from a distance you don't really need this much uh, geometry you can probably go with something like uh, 18 or even lower to be precise but since we want this thing to hold out on close inspection we might want to go and amp up the geometry so we can go with either 24 or maybe even 20, uh, 36 doesn't really matter in this case I'm gonna go with 24 because I think that would be more or less uh, in between to what we want so I'm gonna hit edit poly select both of these uh, sides hit on the inset and in here let's try with five centimeters uh, let's try a bit more than yeah about seven and click OK and bridge those two together now if I take a look at my image in here I'm going to see that the corners are actually a bit rounded so I'm going to come in here select uh, one of the edges click on ring then on loop 
and then chamfer these edges. So we get something like this. All right, uh, one centimeter in this case is not bad actually, looks about right. So click OK. There we go. Honestly, for now, I think that this would be enough. We might want to tweak this thing later, but let's go on and continue with modeling the second element for the side, and that would be the anchor uh, model. For the anchor, I'm actually going to use another image that we got when uh, the life was uh, when the stream was going live, and that is this image. So I'm I actually already uh, placed this thing on a plane just so I can uh, have this thing ready. So let's go ahead and freeze this thing. So I'm going to go right click object properties, go hit freeze and show frozen and gray tick this thing off. Click OK. So now I can no longer select it, but I can use this image so I can actually model on top of it. One thing that I just want to note is before I start modeling the anchor based on this image, we want to compare it with what we have in here. And what we're going to see is that even though this thing is a, it looks as a nicer image of this thing, the actual model actually is much simpler. It doesn't have this uh, piece up here. Uh, these both sides in here are actually not uh, part of that wood, but it's actually something like uh, looks like a different piece, like a cylinder going through it, which will make this thing a lot easier. And we don't have this uh, swivel down here. So this is going to be more of a rounded edge in here. So let's start off and model this thing from here. Now I'm going to start off with a plane. And I can see that in here we have this board, which will help get this thing across like this. Let's go up to about here. And now I'm going to hit an edit uh, poly on top of here and make this thing transparent. I want to move it just a bit in the front so it's no longer at the same thing and overlapping like this. So now what I'm easily going to do in here is well, with my swift loop option, which you can go over here and you can add it, uh, you can find it just here. I have this thing bounded on a, a shortcut. I'm going to start adding in some of these uh, edges that are going to help me get uh, this form in here. So I'm going to hide this thing and now select my edges one by one and start moving them into position. So something like so. Actually, let's go back a bit back, try to get that slope slowly starting to come in up to there and as you can see I'm actually going and following the actual curve of the blanks in this thing there we go upwards like so one more in there. There we go. Now I actually want to get this thing to go lower like this. So out of here, I can flail it out like so. And these two can go up to about there. We're just trying to follow along the form of this thing. So these uh, these three here can actually uh, collapse into one or actually before I collapse those, let's just give it a bit more support in here. And now on the next one, just get it up there and collapse it. And in here, just add in one more. And in here, it's actually ending up with a triangle. It's not going to be a problem. Just get this control and backspace to remove that thing. And we have this uh, geometry. Now, I'm going to check this thing, see if everything is right, looks everything right. Uh, I want to take my pivot and move it over here. So I want to snap it to this uh, edge. I've actually had this question being asked in the live stream and the way to snap something is you go over in the angle snap toggle 
here or the uh, snaps toggle in this case right click on it and just uh, choose the vertex snapping code so that way you can actually uh, select and snap it to an actual vertex so once we snap that thing over there we can use the symmetry to get this thing translated on the other side like so so we now have this thing on both sides so let's go ahead and um, give it some uh, thickness with the help of a shell modifier like that in this case the shell modifier should be a bit bigger because it's supposed to be uh, similar to what we have in here although i think this might be a bit too thick so let's try with something like three centimeters should be fine and now we can take this thing and move it over uh, in this place and actually scale it down to size so it can actually fit our hole in here but before i do that i just want to address one more thing and that would be the actual chamfer that we have on the corners of this thing so i'm going to hit and edit poly and what i want to do is i want to select all the edges that i have in here there we go i'm actually going to double click so this is going to select the whole loop like so go all the way up and across and i want to select all the edges that are going to, that are going to have a sharp transition in here like that one that one that one and this one actually even these two and i'm not going to bother about the uh ones on the back side because i will just use the, the symmetry option all right so now once we have this selected what i want to do is i'm going to use a chamfer and that chamfer is going to give me that look so i don't want to have this things this much uh chamfer so that's right with something like a lesser value like 0. Point even less maybe 0. 0.3 all right 0. 0.3 is going to work so click ok now the thing here is that once we do this we're going to have a bit of a cleanup to do that cleanup being that we're going to have some uh, edges that will require a bit of touch up to finish up so let's check them out and in here is actually can be just uh, select these two and collapse them together select these two collapse it together like that this one along with this can collapse in here which will leave us with a bit of an issue in here so i'm going to collapse that thing over there but instead i'm going to connect it like this so it can cross over all right cool we can work with that in here just get these two collapse them together like that and once we're finished on this side i can just again run the symmetry and get that thing uh, symmetry on the other side flip the symmetry in this case all right everything is fine now i'm gonna select center to object put it like that and put in one more symmetry now this time just uh, make it symmetry on the z and that will project this uh, changes that we did on the back side as well all right and hit an edit poly and remove the middle that we got from the symmetries control backspace and we have this thing more or less uh, done we probably should have uh, get, uh, gotten this thing chamfered as well but i think more or less that we can work with this now uh, like i said previously i do want to have a bit more geometry in here so what i would probably end up doing is go in here with the swift loop hold down shift and just click <laughs> not here though so click in here get that thing transferred on this side as well so we get a bit more geometry to play around with so let's check it out really quickly move these things up a bit like so 
pull this thing and this thing like so and we got this thing to where we actually can use inside over here so let's move it in here now again scale it down move down I'm gonna align this thing so center to center there we go I like so all right awesome so now what I can do is I can check the size of this thing move this thing a bit down like so check and see how big this thing is all right so again let's select this piece and uh, I want to actually center this and scale it inwards so we get it to a bit more of the size that we want this thing to be which I think should be about here or making this thing just a tiny bit bigger like so all right so we have the anchor in the middle we have the cylinder that holds it so we can continue on to making the lower portion which holds the cylinder for that thing is going to be really easy although I'm just looking at my uh, reference image and I can see that I just need to add one more quick cylinder in here to help with uh, finishing up this uh, piece so let's get in here really quickly just add in a cylinder rotate it 90 degrees all right move it in here I'll actually just make it so it's centered I don't need this many sides so I can try with 16 go center to center again move it upwards and then just scale it to size that you want to have this thing be I think this would be just enough all right so now if I take a look at what I have in here it looks very close to what we have here all right so now for the actual holder for this thing for the cylinder what I'm gonna do is get over here I'm gonna hide this thing actually before I hide that thing this is gonna give me the uh, height for the ground what I can do is I can create either a box so we can start either from box or in this case might be oh, you know what let's just do something else then just in case I don't have to go ahead and create everything from scratch what I can do is I can do this I can select one two three on this side one two three uh, on this side and by having this I can detach them as a clone so those uh, six polygons can be detached as a uh, clone move them a tiny bit on the Z and give them a shell this is gonna give me that starting geometry to help me with making this thing and at the same time it's going to follow along that same curvature that we have uh, in here now I, what I can see is that after following that curvature this thing kinda falls off and tapers on this side so since this thing is uh, gonna be going like this on this side I'm gonna go edit poly and extrude like so make it uh, planar on the X in here and then just I'm actually going to delete this edge so which will allow me to basically uh, hold down shift and extend the border which will make it easier for me to create this geometry like so it's the same thing that we were doing with the extrude this way just a bit faster now I want to take this thing and make it so it's following that curvature a lot closer to what we have in our image so let's go in like that 
move it a bit lower. Like this. I'm going to hold down um, my Swift loop, hold down Shift, and click another edge in here. And that should help me with getting it up to a bit more rounded look. Like so. All right. Now, I do want to symmetry this thing on the other side as well. Like so. I actually, I'm taking a look at this thing. I think that this thing is not symmetrical on the back side because I think this thing uh, might be a bit uh, smaller, but that might just be that the angle that this uh, image was taken. So for now, I'm just going to leave it like this. And what I want to do is I want to select everything except this thing and move them all down to the ground. Like so. And it might need to be about this size, which means that I have to scale the whole thing up to about this size. There we go. Which now will allow me to get come in here, select everything. If you remember, uh, even when I started modeling this thing, I told you that there was going to be a lot of resizing, especially because we're not following a blueprint. So we're basically guesstimating. I don't want to do the uh, same thing again with the symmetry. So I'm just selecting them on both sides, move it downwards, and basically just move all of these guys around until we get something that's going to be closer to what we have in the original design here, something like this. So let's go ahead and on this thing, just add in a very, very small chamfer on the edges. So first of all, let's just cap those two. So cap. And I'm going to use the chamfer modifier for that thing of a 0 0.2 maybe like this. And since I don't want to have chamfers on everything in here, I'm going to uh, increase the uh, or decrease the there we go. Increase the minimum. There we go. So with the minimum angle increased, I can only get those creases or the ch those chamfers on the actual edges. Like so. And I want to have the tension set to 0 0.5. Like this. And we have the basic holder for this. Now, let me really quickly check with the turbo smooth, see how this thing would work. Yep, looks just right as a holder for this thing. All right. All right, so before we, con uh, we continue on with modeling the rest of this uh, chair, I can actually see that we've been going on for 25 minutes so far. So I want to cut this video uh, here. And in the next one, we'll continue modeling the rest of this chair. So for now, I hope you guys had fun. You managed to learn something new. If you do have any questions up until now, leave them below. I will meet you in the comment section of the video. If you enjoyed the video, then please click the like button and then come and join me in the continuation. We will continue making this video. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.